Hey everyone, I'm the Anime Watcher, and today I spend 24 hours researching on the 12 Kazuki in Demon Slayer. And let's me explain the backstory and how all their power work from the lower six to the upper one demon. One before we go to each demon moon, let me explain how Muzan organizes them. The six lower moons only have a number on one eye, while the six upper moons have a number on both eyes. In theory, the reason why he divides these two groups of lower and upper moons is because he originally just wanted to create only the upper six to serve him. Some of the upper moons are his income source, some are his butlers, like Akaza, and some are his bodyguards. In theory, Muzan is a lazy demon, you know. He lived for a century, so he was so bored that he didn't want to hunt down humans by himself. He created the lower rank moons just to be his food source. And this is not the only time that all the lower moons get eaten by Muzan. To simplify, all the lower moons in history most likely get eaten by Muzan other than get killed by the Hashira. Because eating one lower moon is like eating a hundred to a thousand humans at once. So why does he need to go out and hunt down humans by himself? If we go about the demon moon, we shouldn't forget about this guy. He is the weakest of all lower moons. He literally gets killed by a random kid who carries his zombie sister on his back. If he is not the weakest, I don't know what it is. But his power is very similar to Nakime, the female demon who controls the Infinity Castle. Both of them can create their own domains just by making sound from their instruments. He loves writing since he was young. Believe it or not, his stories that he writes are actually good. He just surrounded himself with the wrong audience. He did not take criticism well and killed the harsh critics by using his power. Tanjiro was the only one who recognized his talent and praised him. At that moment, he realized that he hated this world wrong. If he just surrounded himself with the right audience, he wouldn't need to become a demon. Also, this demon is actually stronger than we think. The only reason why Tanjiro can defeat him is because he already injured by fighting other demons, and he lost the main drum of his body to that little boy. Next is the Lower Six. Kamanue was the new Lower Moon Six, who replaced the previous one killed by Tanjiro. He joined the other Lower Moons in a meeting with Muzan, but he was the first to die by Muzan's hand. Muzan could read his mind and sensed his fear and doubt. We never got to see Kamanue's power in action, but some fans speculate that he had a water-based ability. His shirt had a water-like pattern, and he might have been able to control water with his will. He could have been similar to Upper Moon 5, who used his water pot to trap Muchiro. His blood demon art could have been called Water Blood Demon Art Manipulation. Rui was the Lower Moon 5, a spider demon with a cool appearance. He had one of the coolest designs among the six lower moons. His backstory was tragic, like most demons. Rui was born with a weak body and could barely walk, let alone run. Muzan turned him into a demon and gave him strength, but he also made him eat humans to survive and grow stronger. Rui longed for the bond of parental love, the kind that made them give up their lives for their child. But his parents tried to kill him instead, after he became a demon who ate humans. Rui killed them and searched for real bonds elsewhere. He made a fake spider family and used fear to create false bonds, but he soon realized that his parents truly loved him. They wanted to die with him to atone for his sins. Rui regretted killing them and killing others. He finally found the bond he sought, but it was too late. Rui was much stronger than Kyogai, the previous demon they faced. Tanjiro and Nezuko had to use their new and powerful abilities, but they still couldn't beat him. Rui used spider webs that were very strong and sharp. He could make them even stronger by turning them red. Tanjiro's Dance of the Fire God was amazing, but Rui was smart enough to cut off his own head with his webs so he could reattach it later. But he was no match for Giyu, who easily cut through his red webs with his lull ability and sliced off his head before he could do anything. But Fan was not happy about it because Tanjiro fight scene with Rui was such a beautiful scene. The creator should let Tanjiro defeating Rui by himself at that moment. Let's move on to the lower four. Lower Moon 4 was called Mukago. Mukago was such a beautiful demon, plus she is the only two female in the 12 Kizuki along size with Daki. She also gets killed because Muzan can read her mind and she annoying him with her cute cry. Mukago had very light gray skin, two dark red stripes across her cheeks and a pair of white horns on her forehead. She also had white hair with shorter bangs between her horns. She wore a plain red kimono with a black and white fur-lined collar, and a large purple bow Mukago's blood demon art was not revealed in the manga or anime, but some fans have speculated that it might be related to plant manipulation or meat budding. 
Plant manipulation is the ability to control plants or create new ones from one's own flesh. Meat budding is the ability to fling off bits of one's flesh that burrow into people and take control of them or grow into clones. These abilities could explain why Mukago was so cowardly and fearful of humans, as well as why she was able to survive Muzan's attack by hiding in his castle. Next is Lower Moon 3. Lower Moon 3 was called Wakaraba. He had X-shaped scars on his forehead and cheeks. He tries to run away from Muzan before he can kill him, but Muzan quickly beheads him. We never get to see Waku Abba's powers. Wakaraba's power is not very clear, as he does not have a specific name or ability related to his position. However, based on his appearance and personality, we can make some educated guesses about what he could do, like he fast and agile, and he had some kind of spiritual or religious power. The Lower Moon 2 is Rora. He begged Muzan not to kill him. He said he would definitely be useful to Muzan. He tells Muzan to give him more of his blood and he'll become stronger. But the fact that a Lower Moon would dare give him instructions only infuriates. And that was the end of the line for Wakaraba. His powers were also not revealed, unfortunately. But don't worry, we get to see all of the stronger demons beyond this point use their OP powers. Next is Lower Moon 1. The sadistic Enmu employed reverse psychology on Muzan and it worked like a charm. While the others pleaded for their lives, Enmu relished the idea of Muzan killing him personally. Death did not scare him. He was thankful that Muzan spared him until the end and let him savor the cries of the other lower demons. Muzan was intrigued by Enmu's unconventional attitude and rewarded him with a generous dose of his blood to enhance his power. But in reality, the Lower Moon won hate Muzan so much, and he even plot to kill Muzan so many times in the past. Yenmu had the ability to invade someone's dreams and shatter their minds by targeting their spiritual core inside the dream. But entering dreams was risky, so he delegated the task of finding and destroying his enemy's core to his minions. Moreover, his blood, which he infuses into the train tickets, induces sleep in anyone who touches it. As if that were not enough, he can also merge his body with large objects, such as a train. This way, he can devour and absorb all of the hundreds of passengers on board. He can sever body parts like hands or his head, and they can still move and speak independently. His talking hands can even mesmerize people into falling asleep. This guy has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. But Tanjiro's Dance of the Fire, God slashes through his train spine and effectively shatters and moves dreams. Let jump into all the badass design Upper Moon except the lower five he kinda ugly. Let's begin with the Lower Six. The title of Upper Moon Six belonged to Daki, the most beautiful demon ever, and her less appealing brother, Gyutaru. Their tragic backstory goes like this. Daki's real name was Ume, which was also the name of the disease that claimed her mother's life. Daki and Gyutaru were born into poverty and struggled to survive in the Red Light District. They were a nuisance because they required money to feed and sustain them. However, when Ume was born, something changed. She was Gyutaro's pride and joy. In contrast to him, she was exceptionally pretty. But this dream was complicated when Um turned 13 and poked out a samurai's eye with her hairpin. She was tied up and burned alive while Gyutaro was away. He struggled his whole life and worked ceaselessly so he could create a better future for his sister. And then in an instant, someone who was born with everything burned her alive like it was nothing. He screamed for God to help him, but only the demon show up. That demon is non-other. Then the upper moon too. He gave them both his blood and a pass from Muzan himself. Gyutaro never regretted this decision to become a demon because it meant saving his little sister. He also couldn't forgive others for having better lives, and so he decided that he'll snatch away those lives and collect them. Daki fights with what appears to be fabrics of clothing that she can manipulate at will. These fabrics are shaped like scarves, are strong enough to block Nichiren blades, and are sharp enough to cut down her opponent. She can use these scarves like an octopus uses tentacles. She's like a much stronger and sexier Doc Ock. She has the ability to transform her body into a similar substance. For example, if someone attempts to sever her neck, she can morph it into this fabric, and it will flex with the blade, making it more difficult to cut. She can also preserve living people inside her scarves, which she uses to keep her food fresh. She can even detach a part of herself, and that scarf can operate independently and monitor things like her stockpiles of living human prey. Gyutaro's powers are also formidable. Gyutaro had already honed his skills with a sickle, and his demon powers enable him to exploit those skills. 
He can manipulate his flesh and blood to create sickles that are laced with deadly poison. He can launch innumerable blood blades at his foes. He can also take over his sister's body and execute flawlessly synchronized tag team assaults. Another advantage of this ability is that both his head and his sister's head must be severed simultaneously or they will simply heal. In the end, Daki and Gyutro were vanquished, but it required a pillar, several skilled demon hunters, a protagonist's formidable demon sister. Basically, it take one Hashira, three top-tier demon slayer, and one demon who's strong as Upper Moon to take down Daki and Gyutaro. I think they are much stronger. Then the Upper Five Demon Moon, even though Tokito Muchiro is super strong and talented. But I think he is not string as one Hashira plus three top-tier demon slayer and one demon girl. Or we can say the fight between Tokito and Upper Moon 5 is just a lazy writing. This was one of my favorite arcs, if not the most, in the series. And a major reason is that Daki and Gyutaro were such impressive and potent adversaries. After the death of his brother and sister, the title of Upper Moon 6 passed on to Kaigaku, who was previously a demon hunter and Zenitsu's senpai. Kaigaku and Zenitsu trained under the same Thunder-style sensei. Because his one student became a demon, Zenitsu's sensei committed seppuku, or ritual suicide, and no one was even there to cut off his head. So he suffered a long and agonizing death. Kaigaku felt no remorse for his former sensei's agonizing death. He had worked so hard, yet he was denied the title of Thunder-style successor. The sensei had proposed that Kaigaku, who mastered every Thunder-style breath except the first one, should share the successorship with Zenitsu, who only knew the first one. The demon blood enhanced Kaigaku's thunder style, but he still fell to Zenitsu, who invented his own seventh breath, Flaming Thunder God. Yushiro later remarked that Kaigaku had not grasped how to wield his new demon skills and powers. Zenitsu was fortunate, for he would have perished if Kaigaku had more time to adapt to his demon abilities. His amplified thunder style enabled Kaigaku to unleash multiple attacks in an instant, strike from all angles, hit from afar, shatter bones, and scorch flesh. Upper Moon 5 was Gyoko, the genie with two mouths in place of his eyes and an eye in place of his mouth. He crafted macabre works of art from the corpses of his human victims. He was an artist when he was a human, and the reason why Muzan want him to join the 12 Kizuki is because the economy reason. Gyoko art is so expensive, even Muzan is the king of the demon, but he cannot create money from the tin air. He has to sell Gyoko art to make money, and he used that money to buy power from the government. Gyoko power is he can possess multiple pots and can teleport among them until the pots are shattered. He has another form he can assume when he requires more power. In this form, he is clad in scales that are harder than diamonds, and everything his fists touch transforms into sweet little fish in his own words. He proclaims himself an existence that knows no limits in this form, which makes it even more amusing when a 14-year-old kid slays him. Finally, he can conjure octopus tentacles from his jar, he can ensnare enemies in floating water, and he can unleash fish-like demons that devour enemy flesh, and even if the enemy slashes them, they'll emit a venomous fluid that can penetrate through the skin. Hantengu is a demon who was once a human named Kiyotaka Kamado. He was born with a rare condition that made him unable to feel any emotions, except for fear. He was constantly terrified of everything around him, even his own family and friends. He was bullied and ostracized by others for being a cowardly weakling. He grew up to become a demon slayer himself, hoping to find a way to overcome his fear and live a normal life. However, he never managed to do so as he always panicked whenever he faced danger or death. He eventually became disillusioned with his life as a demon slayer and decided to join forces with Gaioko, another Upper Moon one who shared his disdain for humanity. Together, they planned to destroy the Swordsmith Village, where many skilled swordsmiths lived and produced high-quality swords for the Demon Slayer Corps. They hoped that by doing so, they would cause chaos and despair among humans and weaken their resistance against demons. However, their plan was foiled by Tanjiro and his friends, who arrived at the village just in time to stop them. A fierce battle ensued between Tanjiro's group and Hantengu's clones. Hantengu's power lies in his unique blood demon art, Emotion Manifestation. People think he has this emotion clone power because he has narcissistic personality disorder when he was a human. But that is actually a huge misconception of him. The truth is, he has an emotion disorder that he cannot have any other emotion except fear. 
So that's why he accepted to be a demon so he could clone himself and have more emotions than just fear. And that's not the only demon we saw who has this power. The first swarm demon that Tanjiro fought was also able to clone himself into three different emotions. This allows him to create clones of himself based on the emotions he experienced in life or felt during battle. Each clone has its own personality, appearance, skills, and abilities that correspond to its emotion. Title of the New Upper Moon 4 was inherited by Nakime, the emotionless Cyclops musician. As Mitsuri observes, Nakime can manipulate her building as if it were her own limbs. Her powers are not very lethal, but they make her very hard to defeat. She is a superior version of the former Lower Moon 6 demon Kyogai. While Kyogai governs his house, Nakime commands what appears to be an endless interdimensional fortress. She can summon anyone she wishes into the fortress, and she can generate teleporting doors wherever she pleases. This way she can transport her enemies elsewhere if they attempt to assault her. She can also produce several detached eyeballs from her body and use them to surveil people from afar. This ability enabled her to track down many demon hunters across Japan. It even enabled her to find the well-concealed mansion of Kaguya Ubuyashiki, which was for a long time one of the best guarded secrets in the world. Akasa, the Upper Moon 3, had one of the most compelling backstories and character arcs in the series so far. I never expected to sympathize with him after he murdered Rengoku, the Flame Pillar. Yet, the mangaka worked some magic with his writing and made me feel for Akaza against my will. Remember, he was only 18 when he turned into a demon, barely more than a child. Let's examine his life before his transformation. He had fangs since birth, which earned him the nickname of Demon Child. As he grew up, Akaza had to care for his ailing father, who required costly medicine. Akaza's father hanged himself because he wished for his son to lead an honest life, not one that depended on stealing from others. In a letter, he expressed his regret for being a burden to his son. But Akaza never saw his father as a burden. His father was innocent of any wrongdoing. In fact, his father was Akaza's sole purpose in life. He would have willingly suffered the most severe punishments for his dad, even if they lasted for a century. After his father's death, Akaza embraced his grave and railed against the cruel world. He got into fights with people and once he pummeled seven adults with his bare hands. He welcomed Akaza into his home, even though he was exiled from Edo for being a criminal. He also entrusted him with the care of his sick daughter while he was away. His wife used to do it, but she took her own life by drowning, exhausted from nursing her. She dreaded that her daughter would only deteriorate and die, and she could not bear to watch that happen. Akaza developed feelings for Koyuki, his sensei's daughter, as he cared for her. He had lost all hope when his dad died, but he rediscovered his joy in life with her. Akaza was such a kind person that he disliked when people apologized for being sick. He understood that they would cure themselves if they could, and he was eager to help them. He never considered helping others as a nuisance. Instead, he viewed it as his duty. Once, Koyuki felt guilty that Akasa was missing out on life because of her, and urged him to go see the fireworks. But he chose to stay with her and promised her that they would go next year, or the year after. He wanted to share that experience with her when she was healthy. Koyuki was so moved that she wept. Akasa learned that his sensei acquired the dojo when he rescued the previous owner. But others were envious and sabotaged his business. Akasa was grateful to his sensei and his daughter for saving him. Akasa's heart healed as he trained in the dojo and tended to Koyuki. He stayed there for over three years, and Koyuki began to recover. Akasa's sensei proposed to give Akasa his dojo and his daughter's hand. Akaza had tattoos of a criminal, so he never dreamed of having a future, much less one where he was loved by someone. But he was offered that chance. He would receive more than he ever dared to hope for. However, just as he gained everything he ever desired, it was all taken away. His sensei and his fiancée were poisoned in his absence. They were poisoned by the Gilus Martial artists who could not defeat Sensei Kiso or Akaza in a fair fight. So they poisoned it there well instead. Akaza failed to save his loved ones again. He had vowed to protect his fiance for his whole life, and he felt that he betrayed that vow. Akaza assaulted the rival dojo that poisoned them. He slaughtered 67 swordsmen with his bare hands. As time went by, no one could accept that such a thing really happened, and the records of that night were dismissed as a legend for 30 years before being erased. Muzan appeared when Akaza had given up on life. 
Akaza became a demon and lost his memories. He craved strength even though he had nothing to protect. But as a demon, he never harmed women, and he eventually regained his emotions and his true self. As Koyuki revealed, he could have continued fighting Tanjiro as a demon, but he chose to end his life peacefully. Sadly, he could not reunite with his loved ones in heaven because of his sins, but he died content because they always loved him. After hearing that, you cannot deny that he is a beautifully written character. He is also immensely powerful. He defeated Rengoku, and he would have likely overcome Dance of the Fire, God Tanjiro, and Awakened Mark Giyu if he had not opted for a dignified death. He had incredible strength and fighting skills, not to mention his regenerative power. His blood demon technique enabled him to create shockwave-like attacks. It also let him sense the bloodlust and fighting spirit of his foes so he could react swiftly. Upper Moon 2 was Doma, the eccentric cult leader demon. He was born with rainbow-colored eyes and was groomed to be the religious leader of the Eternal Paradise cult. His father kept making love to his female cult followers, and as a result, Doma's mother stabbed him to death. She went crazy and killed herself with poison. Doma wasn't concerned about his parents being dead, though. He was concerned about the mess his mother made in the room. Not for a moment did he feel sad or lonely. Human emotions were nothing to him even before he became a demon. He was officially turned into a demon by Muzan at the age of 20. As a demon cult leader, he was very busy. He did not sleep with his cult followers, but he devoured them. He turned Gyutaru and Daki into demons at some point. He also met Inosuke. Inosuke's mother escaped to the Eternal Paradise cult to protect her and her baby son from an abusive household. Doma actually intended to let her live out her lifespan and not eat her. She was beautiful and had a great singing voice. However, she discovered that Doma was eating other followers. She fled and dropped baby Inosuke off a cliff before Doma caught up and killed her. Doma thought that the baby was dead, but Inosuke was a survivor and lived on, like in the Jungle Book. Then came the time when he killed Kaneye Kochu, the flower pillar. That was the beginning of his downfall. Kane's younger sister, Shinobu Kochu, the insect pillar, swore revenge for her sister's death. And she got it. She filled her body with custom poison and let Doma eat her. The poison weakened him so much that the adoptive sister of Kane and Shinobu could finish him off with Inosuke's help. This is one of the best revenge arcs I've seen in anime, and it makes this fight one of my favorites. Doma's demon powers allow him to create ice and frost by using his own flesh and blood. He uses two fans to help channel his ice powers. He can create ice clones of himself to fight for him. For his strongest attack, he can create a giant bodhisattva statue out of ice. This statue can attack enemies, and it produces deadly cold air that can freeze opponents. However, he waited too long to use this attack. And since he was so weakened by the poison, Doma and his OP giant ice statue were defeated. The most formidable of all is Upper Moon 1, Kokushibo, the Six-Eyed Samurai. He was once a demon slayer named Michikatsu Tsugikuni, who fathered a child that carried on his lineage for generations. His descendant, the pillar Muichiro Tokito, inherited his blood and talent. Kokushibo bore the mark that greatly enhanced his abilities, but he also learned that the marked ones would perish before their 25th birthday. Those who survived past that age would soon meet their end. To escape this fate and gain more power, he became a demon and reigned as the invincible number one moon for centuries. What makes him even more fascinating is that he wields the breath of the moon in combat. He is so formidable that he has been overpowering Gyomai, the strongest pillar Sanami, Muichiro, and Genya. Even with their demon slayer marks activated, Gyomai and Sanami are struggling to match the moon breath user's speed and skill as of chapter 172. His sword slashes are accompanied by numerous crescent moon-shaped blades that vary in size and length. This gives his attacks more power, range, and unpredictability. His sword is composed of his own flesh and has multiple eyes on it that enhance his vision. Since it is part of his body, it can heal when damaged or even transform. Despite being outnumbered, Kokushibo is not going down without a fight. Some speculate that he is the brother of the first Breath of the Sun user, since they bear a striking resemblance. Or maybe Breath of the Sun becomes Breath of the Moon when one turns into a demon. As we have learned, the Sun and demons are mortal enemies. All we can say is that he is insanely powerful and a worthy adversary for the strongest pillar. I would not be shocked if he had Hashirama cells in his veins. And that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I am totally hooked on this series and I love making videos about it. 
please hit that like button if you liked this video and want to see more of this kind. So that's all for today's video, and only a small percent of people that watching my video are actually subscribed. So if you like this video, please considering to subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. It really makes my day as a small content creator like this.